thanks very much. And as you can see, I'm describing myself as Enrico Costamania for reasons that will take too long to explain. So apologies for that. My, I am, or have been for 25 years a BBC broadcaster, but I've also chair of a company called Made in China. And for the last 20 years, I've been moving between China and the UK and Europe. So I have a particular dog in the fight about the Cold War that is clearly intensifying between America and China and partly Europe's role in that uh, Cold War development. And my question to myself for this um, session was, in such an age, how do we allow light to penetrate through the curtains, whether they're iron or whether they're bamboo? And of course, bamboo curtain was a term invented by the Americans in 49 to keep communist China out. So my idea at one level is very simple, is in such a Cold War world, we have to move encounters between China and Europe from a national or even a block level, i.e. an EU level, to a city to city level. But actually, if we engage in a national and a block level, we're just going to get embroiled in the politics that's so evident on a day to day level. If you look back historically, and I always like to allow a whiff of history into this, just look at the way the CIA used American painting in the 50s and the Soviets used socialist realist painting, that if you allow national governments to engage with culture, they simply instrumentalize and weaponize it. So I want to move them city to city level. Here are my five reasons. One of them I said is to sidestep national or EU China politics. The second is to take a very popular notion, which is the exchange notion that you see on television where a rich couple moves into a rich, a poor person's house or vice versa. So I want to propose actually a model whereby the Chinese cities and European cities move into each other's houses. Now this might seem at one level, just like another twinning cities, but twinning cities came about immediately after the Second World War, and they came about precisely to allow former enemies to develop. But the truth is, it's not a very useful model for the way the cultural and global economy is working. So what I want to do is make it a people to people and a business swap, not a city government swap. I know I'm surrounded by political animals here and I used to write speeches for Labour politicians myself, but I think in these circumstances, actually political conversations are not going to produce anything other than they're largely producing at the moment, which is a kind of um, uh, my position, your position, your position, my position. There's very little interesting conversation going on between uh, China and Europe at present. So as I said, it's not a 45 idea. So what it is, is very simple. Let's take a very interesting city like Xiamen in China, which may be a city many of you have not heard of. It's a, 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 a seaside city. It's a, U, U, a university city, a very large number. Of it's a film production city. It's just across the strait from Taiwan. And I've started talking to them about doing a city swap with a cluster of cities on the southeast of England and also in Italy. So the principle behind this is very simple. You people swap. So you bring Chinese chefs, Chinese gallery owners, creative businesses, club owners, and most of the people around this table, including me, look slightly too old for clubbing on a Saturday night, but it's big business in China and it's big business across you. Uh, across Europe. Indie film cinemas, property developers, because they're very important in China after the party as much as they are across Europe, fashion companies. So what you do is Sharman moves into a city in Europe and the European city moves into Sharman. So this is a really simple, extremely cheap model and it sidesteps 
politics, insofar as you can ever sidestep politics, by making it an issue of civil society and of business. The virtues of this is that it reaches parts of the population that exchanges don't usually reach. Because you go into restaurants, you go clubbing on a Saturday night, you sit in an indie cinema, you uh, swap fashion companies. These are not the normal constituencies that arise from political twinning. It also means that the twinning happens in places where it doesn't normally happen, where it's not normally seen. And it also, and this is very important, given there's a Liverpool dimension to this, extremely important because it mobilizes the Chinese students who, who are across Europe, who are largely seen as cash cows. There was a, uh, in fact, I won't tell you who it was, but I interviewed a professor at Liverpool University who told me, he couldn't tell me really what was actually at stake in the China Liverpool University because the vice chancellor was less than enamored of that kind of public discussion. And when you see Tom Tugendhat attacking Chinese students as at least some of them agents of the Chinese state, actually to mobilize Chinese students across Europe to take part in these cultural activities could be a major change. Most of you, in fact, probably all of you, because why would you unless you were somebody like me? Now that the first Olivetta computer in Italy was designed by a Chinese guy living in Milan. There's a whole history of Chinese participation in Europe that this city swap, as I call it, could um, tap into. It would take place across Europe. And as I said, for the Chinese students, it would finally allow them a role that isn't simply a role of allowing money to flow into universities so it can fund high paid academics in order to do even more research. The fifth reason why I think it's important is it would help to re-energize re civil society. And civil society seems to me to be the, one of the critical terms that isn't much used, to be frank, whether it's in Brussels or in Beijing. At a time when the state is increasingly occupying more and more terrain, to have a people-to-people, um, a, -people, a business-to-business -business exchange program would be extraordinarily important. Europe is profoundly parochial. It's not a pleasant thing to say for those of us who voted Remain and are very sympathetic to the European project, but it's profoundly parochial. It's fixated on America, it's fixated on China, and it really, because I've spoken to a lot of people for a book we're writing on the Chinese in Europe, and the ignorance about China in Europe is kind of extraordinary. And if one takes the BBC from whom I've worked for 25 years, the BBC's obsession with America means that actually it's very hard other than when the FBI denounces the Chinese government, whether rightly or wrongly, it's very hard to hear the word China mentioned. It's, a, it's an American-centric world. And this is a way of putting people, people together, culture to culture on a city level. And as it were, a night's move in a political world into a culture. Thank you very much.